few days ago, we worked on an M.2 NVMe drive that came in for data recovery. And the drive looked something like this. A lot of you said that this is not an NVMe drive. It's just a regular M.2 drive. But you're wrong. It's an NVMe drive keyed differently. Let me show you what I did. Because we're doing part two today, and I'll explain. We measured all the components on the board, and we only have about maybe 20, 30 components. We do not have any components on top, and we do not have any components on back of the board. So only 20 components to work with, roughly. And of course, the NAND chip. What I did was I measured all the capacitors that you see on the board. I went over all the components, and we detected a short circuit right on the capacitor that you see on top here. So what I did was inject voltage on that capacitor because we did not know if the problem was the capacitor or something else on the board. And I'm going over this quick in case you did not watch the previous video. But if you go a few videos back, you will be able to see what we did. So what I did was I injected voltage on this capacitor because I did not know if the fault was from the capacitor, the chip itself, the NAND chip, or something else on the board. I injected voltage at the cap since we were reading a zero ohm short on both ends. And this component here, this component, got very hot. Now, I did not have this component in stock. It's labeled 2LZ. So I thought, why not remove the capacitor from top here and see if we can release the short? Maybe the problem is the capacitor and nothing else. So I took the capacitor off the board and the short was gone. Great. I do not know the value of the capacitor, so we grabbed one from an iPad motherboard and we replaced it. It's not going to make that much of a difference and it's not going to prevent the drive from working or from displaying files. So after doing so, we plugged the drive onto the computer and we got a message. USB drive not recognized. Before, we did not get that message. But after replacing the component here, we got that message. So after doing more inspection on the board in the previous video, we realized that we had a crack on the chip. You can tell right here. So it could be that we have a faulty NAND chip. Let me apply some alcohol onto the swab and maybe we can go like this so we can see better. Right now we do not know. You see, look at this. You can tell we have something going on right here. So right now we do not know if the problem is the NAND chip or the problem is the component that got hot when we injected voltage at the shorted cap. We replaced the cap and we do not have a short anymore, but we do not know if this component was affected in the process or if the NAND chip itself is not good or possibly the value of the capacitor is not good and somehow it's interfering with the way the computer is reading the drive. All those could be factors and no way to know. So yesterday, the customer came in and he said, I brought you exactly the same drive and I have the drive right over here. Let me show you. Right there. The customer brought in exactly the same drive and he said that we can use this for parts in hopes that we can recover data from his other drive. What we're going to do is replace this cap even though I already replaced it, but I replaced it with the wrong value. Not that it will make that much of a difference. It's only a cap, a filter cap, but why not get the original? We're going to put this cap on the other drive and we're going to replace the 2LZ chip and hope for the best. So let's do it. Let me just quickly measure the cap from here to here. Uh, we do not have a short. We had a short on the previous one that we replaced, but we do not have a short here. Great. All right, so if we go here, we're going to remove the cap and we're going to remove the 2LZ component that got hot under the thermal camera when we injected voltage at the short in part one of the repair. Right now, we may replace this component and this component and still have an issue because of the what looks like a crack on the NAND chip. The chip itself may be bad. Who knows? But we're going to attempt. The least we can do is try it.
And if you look here, this is a BGA component. We're going to have to reball it. No other option. We're going to have to remove that component off the new board, reball it, and solder it back on here. Let's use our anti-glare light so we can see better. Right, and now we're going to grab the cap from right here. Let's remove this label so it does not get burnt. And we're going to remove the cap. Uh, we're going to solder it right here. Very nice. The cap is in place. And now all we have to do is reball the chip from the new card, which I have down here. And uh, we're going to solder it right here. And how are we going to reball the chip? We're going to use a universal stencil. You can find that stencil on our site. Just log in to northwishfix.com, click on shop, and search for universal stencil. And let's use it together to reball the strip. And the stencil that we're going to be using, we are able to reball 0.3 millimeters, 0.35, 0 0.4, and 0 0.5 size. And the stencil looks something like this. And we're going to have to figure out which one to use. So let's remove the chip of the new board. And that chip is tiny. It's not any bigger than the Max chip that you find on a Nintendo Switch. Done. We just rebuild the chip. No, I'm joking. You do not reboil a chip like that. Okay, so we cleaned solder of the chip. And I think I'm zoomed in a lot, but why not? I mean, I wish I can compare the size of this chip to a penny. Let me see if I have a penny laying around here. And I do. I do. That's a penny. And let's take a look at the chip. The chip is the size of the Wii. Almost. Right? It's the size of the Wii on the penny. So if you have a penny, just try to read Wii. And that's the size of the chip. That's how small that chip is. It looks big under the microscope, but you are dealing with a microscopic component. And we have to solder or reball 12 pads on this component. And just look at the penny. Look at this. So if you have good eyes, 2020 eyesight, and you are able to read we, that's the size of the chip. And any wrong movement, that chip will fly to the ninth dimension any wrong movement so just calculate your steps 
and you should be okay. And do not sneeze. If you have that itch and you feel like you want to sneeze, do not do it. That chip will be gone. So let's see. Will this stencil work? Wow, it works perfect. And we're all done. We just rebolt the chip. And we have the rebolt chip right over here. Beautiful. We're gonna apply some flux. Beautiful, beautiful. We have a nicely rebolt chip. We're gonna clean up and solder that chip back on the drive. Hopefully, we are able to recover data for the customer. But if not, then we're gonna call it off because most likely it's a NAND chip issue. Just hold it in place, apply hot air. Once it makes a connection, maybe five to 10 seconds, we'll let go and then we can reflow. And the chip made a connection, awesome. We're gonna apply a little bit of flux and we're gonna bump up airspeed a bit and reflow that chip should settle in place and beautiful look at this it's settled in place tap it pushes back and we're done we did an amazing job Let's wait for the board to cool down a bit. We rebolt, replaced the chip, replaced the capacitor, and all we can do is hope for the best. The customer understands that this may not be a fix. If the chip itself is the problem, then it's game over. So we're gonna plug the drive right here. And let's see, customer is watching, so. I'm sure he's a little bit nervous. He did see the first video. Fume extractor off. And let's see. We did hear the tone. And we did not get the message USB not recognized. We got nothing. Internet Explorer froze, nothing. Let me disconnect and try again. Oh, wait a minute. The computer is struggling to read from the drive. And I got this white screen. We're gonna try the drive on an Apple MacBook and see if anything changes. Okay, so the drive was not recognized. Let me try another reader.
we see a drive. We see drive E and drive K. And Avest, the antivirus program, popped up with this, external drive detected. But we're not able to read files from the drive. Okay, so, so far we are not able to read files. I want to try this on the MacBook. Okay, so we're not able to see any files. Uh, we were not able to see any files with software as well. It's part of the job. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. We did everything that we could. We replaced the faulty components or the components in question. And right now, because of the crack that you see on the chip, that may be the problem. If you are a hobbyist or you are doing this as a living and you want one of those universal stencils, just log in to northridgefix.com and look for universal stencil. We carry everything from the stencils to solder paste, solder bowls, tweezers, hot air stations, soldering stations, thermal cameras, power supplies, voltage injection tool, charging stations, original Inventec Amtec Flux, and we are a distributor of the Flux, Braidwick, everything. Everything that we use on our bench here, we carry and sell in our shop, and orders almost always ship out same day. Northridgefix.com, click on shop, add to cart, Check out, pay, and we ship out your order same day. Easy, and it's not rocket science. That's it. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.